the time has come for finish, for final finishing, the end. Now the temptation is to rush. You've done all of the hard work, you've built your wonderful guitar using nice woods and uh, you spent a lot of time thinking about joints and glues and, and all of that sort of stuff. But the last 5% of work that you do is the first thing that your client or friends or family are going to see. And if you rush this last little bit, then the entire guitar is going to look rushed. And this is, this is something that I fell afoul of rather <laughs> regularly for rather a long time, I'm, I'm ashamed to say. I got to the end, I'd spent months building an instrument, and I just wanted to play the thing. And uh, as a result, my guitars were not anywhere near as good as they should have been. Now, we are going to be applying an oil finish to this, and the trick is, and this is, this is, this is profound. This next tip is the holy grail of guitar building. Read the instructions. Thank you. I know, what can I say? I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> For many years, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was using a teak oil or various things like that, and I didn't read the instructions. I muddled along with sort of received wisdom and and other bullshit like that, and I didn't do it right. And one day, just by chance, almost in spite of myself, I read the damn instructions on the back of the tin. And you know what? They know exactly how you need to apply it. And, uh, well, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, yes, I'm embarrassed. I now know how to apply oils. Now, what I tend to do, uh, especially with teak oil or Danish or tongue or all of these things, they're not, for the most part, they're not really oils. They are a kind of lacquer, I suppose. So, first of all, safety, be very, very careful. Wear masks or do it in, in uh, well-ventilated areas and all of that. And honestly, I have built up uh, an allergy of sorts to teak oil. I, I, can't, I can't have it in the room with me uh, curing without giving me a huge headache for days. Um, but anyway, that's, that is by the by. Applying oil, do what it says on the tin, effectively wipe it on, wait until it is tacky, and then wipe it off again with a clean cloth. Now they say two or three coats, I say five or ten or twenty. It builds up, it builds up just like lacquer, although slower and with a much more attractive sheen. And that, that that's it. I'm basically doing what it says on the tin, but double. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, yes, you can also use uh, white spirit to... Uh, sorry. Yes, white spirit or thinners or something like that to thin down your oil for more penetration. Or you can do what I tend to do, which is start with a very thin lemon oil and then move on to something like Danish and finish on teak. Now, teak gives a higher gloss finish than Danish, but as I said, teak is, seems to have more nasty things in it and Danish doesn't. So or at least I haven't developed a reaction to Danish oil yet. And, uh, and that's it. So we're going to start off by covering our new guitar in lemon oil and seeing what it looks like. <laughs> first things first, since we are going to be oiling the entire instrument, we need to have some way in which to suspend the guitar without ruining the oil. So... So it is time for a hook. You can see I've used this rather a rather a lot. And 
that is nice and strong. The last thing you want to do is drop your guitar. And I've done this before, and it's it's not pleasant. All right. So these are going to be finished separately. Well, the same finish, but. I use up rather a lot of this uh, tissue, but then, well, what is that in comparison to a beautiful custom hotel? And. Here we go. Now, I have gone over this very carefully. I've double checked everything. I've sanded everything down. I've run it all the edges over. It is all wonderful. It's all wonderful. So, as I've said, these things are toxic. Highly flammable paint product. It's not a natural oil. Uh, this is uh, lemon oil. You should read the uh, the documents on this. It's actually pretty scary stuff. Interestingly, if you're a fool, like I often am, and your top gets stuck, a good way to do it is is uh, use a lighter to heat up around the edge, and that will loosen the oil just enough. Uh, highly flammable, so don't do too much, but uh, and don't sue me if you do and you catch fire. <laughs> All right, we've got more of this, and I tend to fold it up into something like a tool, really. I just like having control, and that's not working because I am doing all of this on video and talking, it just decides not to work properly. There we go. All nice, no loose edges. <clears throat> the time has come. This is my favourite bit of a guitar build. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? Now I'm going to stop to take a photograph. All of you obviously, hopefully, should know that I blog constantly. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, all of that. And this is one of my favourite photos. Halfway through, that's why I finished. Alright, so there we go. I now need to do the entire guitar in the lemon oil. And uh, the reason for doing this is that lemon oil is much, much thinner than other oils and it penetrates deeper and gives us a very good base from which to start. Start with the front. And this is where your tightly wadded up bit of paper comes into its own. It gets into corners nicely. Once it starts getting all raggedy and used, it won't. And guitars have a surprising amount of corners. All right.
do around the hook. And from there, we now have the ability. I like to try and keep it relatively even. If you've got a hard line where your oil is, <coughs> it might well show at some point. So, the trick is to do it all rapidly. Dust will always fall out of your cavities, and this is why I've got a nice white bit of tissue. Now my carving needed more oil to penetrate down into the into the lettering, which is fine. And effectively, I'm doing several coats of the of the lemon oil as we go. See what it sounds like? Finally. The 3D logo. And this requires saturation, really. But that's, well, that's why we're using lemon oil. Now the one thing I'm not going to oil while I'm doing all this is the fretboard. I want the fretboard to be nice and dry when I need to mask it off. And there we have it. The first coat of oil is on. And then the oil dries really, really quickly really. Really, really. So, so yeah. What I'm going to do is leave this to cure for a couple of hours and then I'll turn the camera back on and we'll film applying the first coat of Danish one. 